A common problem is your live stream. Nothing compares. 
Good morning. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Yes, welcome to the presence of the Lord. You are most welcome. Welcome. It's a beautiful Sunday here. It's a beautiful Sunday and you are blessed. Why are you blessed? Because you are the child of the Most High. There's no question about it. There's no discussion about it. It's fixed. The, I mean, it's so rigged. It's so rigged. This election of sonship is so rigged. You can't even spoil it if you try it. So just enjoy it. Enjoy it because the boundary lines had fallen for you in pleasant places before you came. It's just because we are ignorant of this fact. So we give our inheritance to Satan. Don't, don't do that. Do not do that. You are blessed because your father owns the world. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Satan has nothing to offer. He's only a deceiver. He's a liar. And he's already shaking because you woke up. See, Jesus needs people who will just stand with him. He doesn't want you to do anything. He finished it. But you have to agree with him. Agree. Agree that he is Lord so that he can show that power through you. It's a privilege for you and I to, to stand next to Jesus. It's, a, it's the highest privilege. All he needs from you and I is that agreement. Yes, Jesus, you are Lord. Yes, Jesus, you are my God. Yes, Jesus, you are on top and your enemies are under your feet. I mean, you are seated and the enemy is your footstool. And I'm seated with you in heavenly places. Think of it. Who am I? Who are you? To be raised so high. Imagine a child that runs into the father's arms or the mother's arms and the, the father will just pick that child up and that child immediately is taller than the father. Imagine how that child feels. And here is Jesus saying, sit with me. And you are still like, I don't know about that. Okay. Choose what you want. I choose to sit with the Most High. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us do our declaration of today so that we can pray. The word of God is a hammer. The word of God is a sword. Use it. God gave you his word. It stands forever. You can't change it. I can't change it. Just use it. Okay, it's going to be a bit of a long reading this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 11. 2 Timothy 1. From 6 to 11. Let us listen to what the word is saying so that we will know how to, <laughs> to put that sword and that hammer and, and knock, hit the nail on the head. The word is your power. All right. Second Timothy 1, 6 to 11. Therefore, I remind you, I'm reminding you this morning. It's nothing new. It's a reminder. It's something you know already, but you might have forgotten. So this reminder is coming. Therefore, I remind you to stay up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Paul is talking to young Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's not from God. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That means your mind is clear. You have the mind of Christ. There's no, no shifting in, in your 
resolution. You are, you are fixed on Christ because he's the word. Verse 8, therefore, because of this, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. I don't know if you are listening to this word and what they mean to you. God did not call you because of what you did. He had already purposed it. According to his own purpose and grace. Unmerited favor. You cannot merit this. I don't care what you do. His purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. That's why I say it's so rigged. There's nothing you can do about it. You choose it or you leave it. Before time began, God chose you and I to stop playing games with your life. Verse 10, that has now been revealed all the things that you didn't know. Today, it's being revealed to you. You are being reminded of who you are. It has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The gospel is light. It's the only way you can, the only means to see. If you don't proclaim this, that means you are walking in darkness. We've established that before. It is the only means by which you can see. Otherwise, you are blind. Take it from me. You can quote me. <laughs> if you don't walk in the light of the gospel of Jesus, you are blind. You think you see, but you, you don't see. Verse 11 to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Today, we want to take that gospel of light, that this gospel of truth, and declare it to the north, south, east, and west, to the four corners of the earth, and say, Lord, your word is power. Lord, your word is light. Lord, your word breaks yokes. Lord, your word breaks chains. Jesus says the, 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 the living God has, has anointed me and sent me out. Jesus is the word of God. So let us today know the power that is in the word of God and use it and come against Every spirit of limitation and intimida intimidation and, and opposition and constr every constricting spirit, everything that makes you feel like I can't breathe, I can't move, I can't do. Anything that is opposing or trying to steal your destiny or obstruct you from your inheritance, use the word of God. Wield that sword. Destroy the strongholds and the opposition. It is not you. It is the word of God. His name is Jesus. He is the light of the world. And because you are in him, you are the light of the world. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning by the power of your Holy Ghost. In the matchless name of Jesus, Father, we approach your throne of grace boldly because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus. And we obtain mercy. It's not what we do. 
Holy Spirit, we ask for wisdom, the wisdom to know, the wisdom to stand with Jesus, the wisdom to agree with Jesus so that we can step in into that position where he already planned for us before time began. Father, we thank you that you so loved the world that you released your word into the earth realm. You sent your word and you saved us because your word is called Savior. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you that you don't treat us as we deserve. If thou, O Lord, should mark our iniquities, Lord, who would stand? Here we are. Sinful and sorrowful would we would be without Jesus. But we can stand with boldness because the righteous are as bold as a lion. And we are not righteous in ourselves. We are righteous in Christ Jesus. So, Father, there, is, there, are, there are not in, enough thank yous that we can say to you that would even make sense to what you have done for us. But that is why you see the heart and not just what we say or do. So we ask you, Lord, accept our thanks. We thank you this morning, Holy Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Holy God, mighty God, loving God, merciful God, gracious. We thank you. And we ask that because it pleased you to call us, to choose us before time began, be present in our midst today. We enthrone you, Lord Jesus, because you are the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. <laughs> the enemy is under your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Thank you for reminding us of who we are today because you are the Spirit of truth. Jesus said, you will lead us into all truth. Thank you for being present with us this morning. We lift you up if we could. We magnify you and we glorify you. Eternal God, holy God, magnificent God, we worship you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go into our reading of today. That would come from Genesis chapter 35. Let's go to the beginning. It's always a very good place to start. Genesis 35. I will read from verses 1 to 7. And of course, other Bible portions will follow. Let's just read that. You need the word. You need the truth from the word. It says, Then God said to Jacob, Arise. Think of it. God might be talking to you right now. So listen well. God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother and Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him put away the foreign gods that are among you purify yourselves and change your garments 
Then let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Verse 4. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth, terebinth tree which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. May the Lord bless his word and may the Lord make his face shine upon us this morning and, and open our understanding to what he wants to speak to us about through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So you'll be wondering what's the little weapon about. Yeah, you are the little weapon. You are the little weapon. When you understand who you are in Christ, you are so dangerous to the enemy, <laughs> you, you, you have forgotten. That's why you are being reminded today to stay yourself up because God has called you to stand with him and do what he needs to do. So that's the title, A Little Weapon. You are that little weapon. I am that little weapon because we are dangerously armed. <laughs> we are so dangerous, you have no clue how afraid the enemy is of you. Why, why do you think he fights you? If, there's, if, if, you, if you mean nothing, why is he fighting you? If you are not a threat to him, why is he fighting you? And what do you do? You run away. Please. Who should be running? Who has all the power? Who has all the authority? You didn't read Mark 16. You have the name J-E-S-U-S -S, and you are running from the devil? Have you forgotten before Jesus even died and resurrected, he sent out his disciples and they came by rejoicing. Oh, we cast out demons in your name. They did that before the sacrifice of Jesus, the physical one. Of course, it was slain before the foundation of the world. So if they could do that, then when Jesus was physical on earth, what, what are you waiting for? You are waiting for a Pentecost so that you can just celebrate another Pentecost. And what do you do about it? Pe you, you, pe we are, oh, Pentecost, will go. Pentecost came 2,000 years ago. What are you doing about that power? What are you doing with that power that was released then to the, to the whole earth? You're just waiting for season after season. Oh, let's celebrate Christmas. Let's celebrate Easter. Let's celebrate Pentecost. No, start to walk in those revelations that God came into the world, born as a baby. 
He grew up like you and I. The world was oblivious. But those who knew, knew. <laughs> because Herod destroyed children of that time. When, they, when the three wise men came to Jesus. Uh, sorry, came to Herod. And God told him, told them, don't go back to him. And Herod had to destroy innocent children just to, to, to catch Jesus. And you are still waiting. You still don't know who Jesus is. You're waiting for seasons to come so that you celebrate instead of step, stepping into the revelation. The revelation is now. You, you just heard us read it in 2 Timothy. Go back and remind yourself. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power. When was that said? 2,000 years ago. That power came on Pentecost. Then. And that power is still here. God did not take away the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is, is the, the resident person of the Godhead now on earth. Jesus came, did his own. Now the Holy Spirit is here teaching us. When God said, in the beginning, let there be light. Did he have to come back and speak, let there be light? No. So once he released the Holy Spirit, he didn't take it back. He, he doesn't have to tell you again. The Holy Spirit is still here. And you have the power of the Holy Spirit to do what Jesus would do. He says, go in my name. He didn't send you to do anything on your own. Stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from above. Until then, do nothing. The power came. We are still waiting. Oh, I'm too short. Oh, I'm too young. Oh, I'm too tall. Oh, I'm too fat. Remember David, 17 year old, destroying Goliath? That the whole army of Israel could not? Why did he do it? Because he wasn't looking at himself. He was looking at the God that saved him, like, like Israel, Jacob, just said here. The God, there in, in Genesis 35, verse 3, he said, Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Have you yet recognized that your life that you have is only because of God? Or you think you did it all by yourself? We need to wake up. This is to awaken us, those who who call themselves believers in Christ. I'm not talking about churchgoers. I'm not talking about lip service Christians. I'm talking about those who are sold out, who have surrendered, who have died. They are dead to themselves so that Christ can live through them. I'm talking about Christians who understand what holiness is. Forsaking the flesh and always aiming to live in the spirit. This is a wake up call for such Christians. This is to awaken us. The real body of Christ to our power and authority, reminding us of who we are. It's not about what you feel. Stop waiting for Pentecost 2021. 
get up and leave the outpouring that was poured out 2,000 years ago. Live in that outpouring. The people then didn't even know what you know today. They didn't have all the information that you have today. Get into that, that outpouring. Get under and get soaked in that outpouring and live for Jesus. He died your dead, so you should be dead. All Christians, those who call themselves Christians, should be dead so that they can be alive. Once you are dead to self, then you are alive in Christ. Then God is working through you. If you are still full of yourself, then carry on. Remember, there's no force in Christianity. It's your choice. That outpouring that came on that Pentecost is still pouring out. It never stopped because the Holy Spirit is still here since then. Made known to all flesh because different uh, uh, tongues and nations were there in Jerusalem that time. So don't tell me it's a Jewish thing or it's a white man's thing. No, it's not. It's an everybody's thing. Don't wait any more. God has already reaped your success. You have been called before the foundation of the world. This is spiritual. Just switch off your little brain. It won't work here. Just switch that off for now. Jesus meant it when he told his disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they were empowered. Because he knew you couldn't do anything without that power. That's why I'm saying that you should be armed and dangerous. You are a little weapon. <laughs> because you carry the, the, the most powerful power you can think of. That power dwells in you. The Holy Spirit of God, creator of heaven and earth. Everything you think you know and everything you know that you don't know. Because you are his temple. He lives in you. We must understand that we are a real threat to the dark world. That's the only reason he's fighting you. He's trying to see whether you know who you are or not. <laughs> Remember, demons recognized Jesus. But the human beings around him did not know who he was. Jesus would just approach and they would start screaming. We know who you are, son of God. Why have you come to torment us before our time? They knew him. The Bible clearly says, demons believe in God and tremble. And there are people who say they believe in God and they don't tremble. They don't even understand who they are. They don't have any reverence for God. They think it's all flesh, flesh, flesh. Let's do this Sunday thing so we can go and eat. What does Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that is your power, that is your food, that is what feeds you, that is what strengthens you, that, that is your knowledge, that is your strength. We are the real, walking, talking, living, little weapons. A battle axe in the hand of God. A sword. A hammer. A rock like, like uh, uh, David used. Goliath that was intimidating the army of Israel. 
One little boy took one stone, bam, and he was down. Are you armed and dangerous? You still looking for human weapons? What we are fighting is not flesh and blood. What kind of stone did David put in that sling, to, slingshot that, that knocked down a, a, a giant? You think that was just a stone? No, Jesus is that stone. Start to use him. Start to trust him. Start to believe in him. Start to say yes to Jesus. Forget about who you think you are. Well, who do you think you are? Start to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You carry the eternal power of creation. You carry the resurrection power. I've said it before. When Jesus died, nobody went and did a vigil at his grave. I'm praying in tongues and saying, wake up. No, they were all afraid. They ran away. It was the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, if you call yourself a Christian, that power resting from the dead, and you should walk in that power, and that's why you are armed and dangerous. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. <laughs> Let's put a, a, a mighty stone at the, at the mouth of his grave so that, grave so that his, his disciples won't come and steal him. Steal a, the dead body to do what? To prove what? The grave <laughs> has no chance against this rock of ages. I don't care what stone you put there, it has no chance. He called out Lazarus after four days. He had decayed and was smelling. He did that before the resurrection. And we are still waiting so that Pentecost can come and we can celebrate. Why not start right now? Don't wait for Pentecost. You have Pentecost in you. We must learn. We must have the, the mentality like we just read there in Genesis in verse 5. Genesis 35 verse 5. And they journeyed and the terror of God <laughs> I use, I'm using the New King James Version. I don't know what version you are using, but whatever it says, it, either it will say the fear of God, the terror of God. The fear of God was upon the cities that were all around them. And they were limp. They were paralyzed. They could not pursue the sons of Jacob. You should read the story. How, you know... This prince went and, and got Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. You, he, he loved her, wanted to marry her. Instead of going through the normal route, he went and took her and just slept with her. Of course, his, her brothers were wild. And they went and massacred the whole place. Jacob is like, come on, people, you want to kill me here? And God told him, just move away from here. Go to the place that I've earmarked for you. And he left. And the terror of God was upon the city. Nobody called you to do anything on your own. Stop struggling to be a good Christian. Just follow Jesus. Let your flesh die. Think holiness. Forget about all the cravings of the flesh. When you are in his presence, you are automatically empowered to do right. You cannot do it on your own. 
How could Moses survive without water and food? For 40 days, twice. It's because he was in God's presence. He will supernaturally empower you to live a right kind of life. Otherwise, you are struggling on your own and you will not succeed. Take that from me. The ability to succeed is in his presence. If you are afraid, step into God's presence. Let his terror terrorize those who want to terrorize you. It's not about what you can do. It's the terror of God that was on the cities all around. We're talking spirit things here. Let God protect you. Let God save you. Let God heal you. Let God give you wisdom. Let God empower you. Let God, let God, let God. You just let go. Let go of what you think you know or what you think you can do. Let him be God. Let us go to to Joshua. Joshua chapter 2. Book of Joshua chapter 2. Let us read through it. If you think it's about holiness in your own strength, ask Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute, but her heart was right. She could see the truth and accept the truth. And she was made righteous. She wasn't righteous on her own. She was made righteous because of her faith in God. Let us read this. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. See, God knows your heart and my heart. They could have gone anywhere in that city. But because the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Most High, God ordered their footsteps to this woman that the Bible says she was a harlot. They could have gone anywhere else in the city. I'm trying to tell you that your story was already settled before you came here to earth. Before time began, God finished with you before you started. Okay, so they went to Rahab, verse 2. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. Uh Aha. Look right there. It was told who? The king. What are you fighting? Higher powers than you think. When you read, let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Don't just read and pass. 
they had security in that country, in Jericho. The security could have dealt with the situation. It was not a must that they had to tell the king. They told the king that men have come. When is a king usually prompted? Is when other kings come. <laughs> I just said earlier, the three wise men went to Jerusalem. Who did they go to? Herod the king. Because they were on the same rank. But here you are, thinking that you are a man, man but kings know you. That's why you must know your identity in Christ. It was told the king of Jericho, behold, men have come. Yeah, what have I got to do with men? You deal with them. It's none of my business. That's why I pay you to do that. But no, this is different. Because the identity of these men were, in essence, kings. They are ruling. In this place. Why? Because they went in the power. In the spirit of God most high. That's why a king. Is disturbed. I've, to, I've asked you before. If you think Satan is against you. Why? If you are an non-entity. He won't even bother. About you. So start to raise your standard. Because kings. Talk to kings. If these men were not spiritual kings, the king would not have spoken to them. So in, in, in the flesh, you think, oh, I'm nothing. Think again. If you call yourself a Christian, think again. Because when you wake up, kings wake up. They are scared of you when you wake up. News goes out when you step in. Oh, they have come again. And you, oh, you sing, yeah, I'm a man, man. Paul asked you that question. Are you still a man, man? Men have come here tonight from the children of Israel. Because they are all kings and princes. That's why a king ha had to be bothered. Otherwise, you don't bother a king. Go, go deal with it. Under normal circumstances, the king will just get your head cut off since I'm paying you to do what? To disturb my sleep because men came. Deal with it yourself. What am I paying you for? But these were not mere men. So the king of Jericho, verse 3, sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. See, if you are not important, Satan will not look for you. Just get it straight. Stop shivering. Then the woman, Rahab here, took the two men and hid them. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were, they were from. I, 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 I saw them, but I, I, I don't ask questions. Verse 5, and it happened as the gate was shut, or was being shut, sorry, when it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you may overtake them. You see, she saw what others didn't see. Let's read on. Verse 6. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. 
Then the men pursued, so the men of Jericho now pursued the two spies by the road to the Jordan, to the forts. And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. May the, may the gate be shut against your enemy in Jesus' name. They will not find you. Stop shivering. The gate was shut against the enemy. Verse 8. Now, before they lay down, before these two spies lay down, Rahab came up to them on the roof and said to the men, listen to what Rahab said. I know. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know? Do you know? Rahab, a prostitute. She knew. Others did not. I know that the Lord has given you the land. <laughs> How did she know? They, were, they only came to spy at this point. You are still living in the flesh, fighting in the flesh. This woman was sharp. I know that the Lord has given you the land. That there, that's the word we are using today, that the terror of you has fallen on us. The terror of you, why? Because they are sent by God. Like we read in Genesis, the terror of God fell on the cities. It's the same thing here. So Rahab is talking to people that are supposed to be men, men, ordinary human beings like herself. And yet she's saying, the terror of you has fallen on us. Where is your terror that is falling on your enemy? Is he running from you or are you running from him? Listen to, to what Rachel, uh, Rahab, Rahab goes on to say. And that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. They, they didn't even do anything yet. They just went to spy the land. When are we going to wake up to spiritual realities? When are you going to stop allowing the enemy to steal your inheritance, to, to take the upper hand in your life? When are you going to realize, understand, know that you are in Christ and not just a mere man? Rahab knew. I know that the Lord is in the, the enemy always knows. We are the ones who wait till the last to know. When Jesus steps in, the demons knew they were screaming, but the people he came to save did not know him. And today we are still preaching because people are still refusing to know. See how merciful God is. Thousands of years, generations upon generations, God is still telling people, I am your God, I love you. I am your God, I love you. That, that's the whole gospel. I am your God, I love you. Just, just follow me and, and have everything that I have. I'm your father. Whatever you have is an inheritance in my house. That's all it is. The enemy always knows. The Pharisees knew. They remembered. Jesus said, oh, uh, uh, I'll come back in three days. And they, at least they tried to prevent it. They prepared themselves to prevent. They said, put a, a heavy stone at the mouth of his grave. The enemy always knows. And you are still uh, not too sure about that Christianity thing. And but you are sure where you are going? <laughs> Yeah, you are very sure of where you are going, right? 
you know exactly where you are going, but you you are not sure about that Christianity thing. <clears throat> you better repent. You better just repent. Jesus loves you. He died for you. It's here. Read. Go and sit down and read this again. I'm, re- I'm, I'm repeating. See, the Bible repeats a lot of things. It's not because God didn't have uh, anything else to say. He's so, you see, today we read in Timothy, you are being reminded, remind, because you are, you are slow to understanding. You are still dull. Ask God to open your understanding. It's a gift. You don't need to go to university for it. Just ask him. God, I want to know. I don't just want to hear about. I need to know. Because times are hard. I need to know where I'm going. And once you know, the terror of you will fall on your enemy. That's why you can trample them down. Because they are all paralyzed. Like Goliath, he just fell. David went, took his own sword, and cut off his own head. Just like he said, by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are a little weapon. You are armed and dangerous. Know who you are. Recognize who you are. All the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. And here you are being faint-hearted because of them. They are already faint-hearted because of you. Verse 10, Joshua 2. Joshua chapter 2, verse 10. For we have heard how... (laughs) I can't stop. (laughs) We have heard how the Lord, the Lord, not you. We've heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. The Lord did it for you. You did not do anything. You cannot do anything. So just give up. Let the Lord do it for you. And that means you just have to trust him. Full stop. That's how difficult Christianity is. Just trust. Is that all? Yeah. That cannot be all. No, that is all. But it just means you have to give up yourself and allow Jesus to live in you. Oh, what a terrible thing for God to live in me. Oh, how how bad. What a terrible thing that God Almighty should live in me. Let, let me think about that two times, maybe three times, maybe all my life before I can decide about the privilege of God living in me. See how dull the human mind is. God wants to live in you and you are thinking. You are are thinking, yet you still don't know. A prostitute knew. You are still thinking, educated as you are. Mm -hmm. So, for we have heard... (laughs) I can't stop laughing. Sorry, guys. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. You just had to come out. The Lord did the rest. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you did what? Whom you utterly destroyed. They utterly destroyed these kings. Not in their power. 
God gave them that power. So the enemy knows your history. The enemy knows your story. But you are still oblivious. She narrates to them. We heard what God did for you. How this happened and how that happened. Oh, really? I didn't know. I didn't know that happened to me. I didn't know. didn't know I'm still alive because God kept me alive. I thought it's because I, I know how to open, you know, breathe through my nose. Verse 11. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. <laughs> Excuse me, let me laugh. The enemy is shaking because of you, and you are shaking because of the same enemy. Somebody is missing something here. Our hearts melted. There, there was no courage in any one of us because of you. Why? For the Lord your God. <laughs> he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. He is God everywhere. The God that I serve is God everywhere. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth, he rules over all. And I am his child. If my daddy owns it, I own it. That's why Jesus invited you to sit with him in heavenly places. Look down and see what's happening to the enemy down there. And here you are, shivering. I need you to pick up your courage today. Because here, the, the courage of the enemy failed. So you, you pick up your courage. God told Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Fear not. You are being reminded. This is who you are. A little weapon, armed and dangerous to the enemy of your soul, the one that has come to steal, to kill, to destroy, the one that wants to prevent you from entering into that eternal inheritance. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your husband or wife. Not talking about your, your friend that you just quarreled with. Talking about spiritual things here. As soon as, as soon as, as soon as we heard these things that God did for you, our hearts melted. We were so stricken with fear that no courage remained in any of us because we realize that your God <laughs> is the Most High. Your God, He is God. He is alone God. Capital G-O-D. He's God alone in heaven above and on earth beneath. He rules over all because he created it all. Now, therefore, verse 12, I beg you, I beg you, Rehab was begging these two spies. I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, by this your God, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brother. This is somebody who has wisdom. Pray that you receive. See, she was in the genealogy of, of Christ. You want to be righteous on your own. Listen to somebody that the Bible describes as a harlot 
Immediately, she starts to, to gather her family in. If I must be saved, then my father must be saved, my mother must be saved, my brother must be saved, my sister must be saved. This is your prayer for family salvation right there. Because you have been empowered, you have the power to speak, to declare, to live that life that others will see and come to you. You have been chosen. Rahab was just one of the children. I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brother, my sisters, and all, and all, and all, and all that they have. She did not leave any stone unturned. She wanted it all. And you are still thinking. You are still thinking. Your father owns the world, and you are still begging for 10 pounds. This is somebody who knew who God was. She gathered in every, she, she just took it all. Not just them, but everything they have. <laughs> Not just talking about father, mother, brother, sister, and all their extensions. I'm taking them all in. And deliver our lives from death. That should be your prayer. Deliver my life from death and deliver my people from death. That was what Esther did in, in, in Susa. She said, my people are being sold and I'm queen. No, I must do something. She wasn't too posh to remove her, her, her royal robes and, and put on sackcloth and fast three days. For her people, not for herself. Start to intercede for your people. You know, they don't know yet. Rahab knew. Her people didn't know yet. But she brought them into the light. The gospel is the light. The presence of God is the light. Once you recognize who you are dealing with. Deliver our lives from death. Very, very specific prayer. So the men answered her, our lives for your life, uh, our lives for yours, if none of you tell this business of ours. And it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. And even the spies didn't say, maybe the Lord will give us the land. They knew it. When the Lord has given us the land. He didn't say, if the Lord give us the land. No, they knew. Verse 15, then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall. You see, she was a gatekeeper. She, she was on the wall. She was looking out. She was vigilant. She knew when danger was coming. She knew how to act. You must be vigilant in the Lord. And she said to them, verse 16, Get to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterward, you may go your way. So she was now giving instructions 
about life, how they can preserve their lives. You are called to be a life saver. You are called to be there for others. You are called to show people the way. Don't say, I'm only one of the daughters. Oh, I'm only a woman. Oh, I'm only a prostitute. Are you the one doing it? Or have you allowed God to do it through you? So that even whether you are learned or not, you receive the wisdom of God. It's a gift. I've said it many times. You don't need university to know God. There's another example. So the man said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us with. See, <laughs> the, the, the lady was unrelenting. The man said, you made us swear. You remember the Syrophoenician woman? Jesus, my daughter is sick and I need help. Oh, no, I didn't come for you. I don't care. Oh, you are a dog. Oh, yeah. I, I just need the crumbs. She met, that woman made Jesus heal her daughter. She, it, she wasn't in the covenant. It wasn't the time for the Gentiles yet. Her persistence brought her the victory. And then you will pray once and say it's enough. And then, you, you, then it hasn't hit your heart yet. This woman, the men say, you made us swear. We will save your life and the life of your family and extended family. Because she was persistent, she knew what she wanted. The men said, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own house. See? Household salvation. Their lives were spared. So it shall be that whatever, or oh sorry, whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and we will be guiltless. And whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if a hand is laid on him. What does that talk to you about? The sacred place. You cannot receive salvation out there. You must stay in the sacred place. Stay where the protection is. God is a man of his word. He will keep his word. If your family members don't want to come in, then their blood is on their head. But as long as they come into this house, they will be protected. We, we read the Bible too flimsily. We need to take time to read. It's not just a story. Chew on the words. Holy Spirit, what does this mean? There's so much wisdom in this book. You can't even... That's why you read and forget. And God has to repeat. God has to remind. It's not about ta, 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 let's just finish it and go. Chew on it. Meditate on it. Ask the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Verse 20. If you tell this business of us, then we will be free from your oath, which you made us swear. So it's a two-way thing. God opens the door to you. You step in and you stay and you come in. You build the relationship. Love is a give and take. And it, is only, it only works in intimacy. Verse 21, then she said, 
according to your words, so be it. So she said, Amen to what the man said. So be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet cord in the window. They departed and went to the mountain and stayed there three days. <laughs> Have you visited the mountain of God yet and spent three days with him? All these things are significant. The sacred place, the mountain of God, spending time with him. They went to the mountain and stayed there three days until the possible stay in God's presence until your enemy cannot find you. And they will leave. Stay in God's presence. Until your pursuers. Return to where they came from. Don't expose yourself to danger. After you found Jesus. Stay in his presence. Don't go back. So how you used to live, you are only exposing yourself. And this time when the enemy snaps you, you won't live to tell. God forbid. They departed and went to the mountain and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned. The pursuers sought them all along the way, but did not find them. God will blind the eyes of your enemies in Jesus' name. They will never find you because you are in the sacred place of the Most High. They can't find you there. Let them look. You can see them, but they won't see you. So because you can see them, stop being afraid of them. They don't see you. They don't see you. They can't touch you. Start to know these things. Only with my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. You can see them, but they cannot see you. Their eyes are concealed. The, the glass is translucent. They can, you can look through, but they can't look in. So stop being afraid because you see them outside scratching at your window. They are just trying to see if they can scare you. If you're in a safe place, you just sit there and laugh because you should know that they cannot see you. They're just scratching to see. Let us wake up to the truth of the word of God, to the truth of the love of God. Your protection is in his presence. Don't bother about what the enemy is doing. Just stay there. They looked, but they couldn't find them. Verse 23. So the two men returned, descended from the mountain, crossed over. <laughs> this, this chapter is so loaded. It's so loaded. Have you crossed over yet? Or are you still thinking whether to go back to the life you used to have? They crossed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all that had befallen them. And they said to Joshua, listen to their declaration. Truly, the Lord has delivered. They hadn't even gone to, to fight Jericho yet. What are you speaking? What is your utterance? The Lord has, he says, truly, 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 as a matter of fact, the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands. They only stayed in one house. They didn't even know the rest of Jericho yet. But they claimed it. The Lord has delivered all the land into our hands. 
for indeed all the inhabitants of the country are faint-hearted because of us. That's your word. Are you faint-hearted because of the enemy or the enemy is faint-hearted because of you? What's your position? Ask yourself that question. What is my position in this game? Am I on the winning side? Or am I still thinking whether to join the winners? Because there's a clear winner here. It's not maybe or maybe not. No, there's a clear winner. Jesus has won. Jesus has already conquered. What you are going through is to help you make up your mind. Because God won't force you. Okay. Make up your mind to find out who you really are in Christ Jesus. Never give the enemy the upper hand. You have already been created to win, to succeed. Start to proclaim your victory like these two men did. And know it for sure because they said, truly, truly the Lord has delivered the land into our hands. Start to proclaim your victory before you even go into the battle. Because it's a mindset thing. Speak what you want to see, not what you are seeing. Speak what you want to see, not what you are seeing. The, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has already gone ahead of you. Remember Genesis 35 that we read. The terror of God has gone ahead of you. The battle is not yours to fight. All you need to do is to put on the full armor and stand. Not the armor of Saul, the armor of God. Talking about David. Saul tried to give David his armor. David said, "Mm -mm, I can't do with this. I know what I need. (laughs) The rock of ages. We need to start to allow God to showcase himself through us. We are his children. On our own. We have zero power. Zero, zero. You cannot do anything. You are just nothing. Nothing without God. And God is looking for those who will trust him. Who will speak what he speaks. So that he can use your vessel, your mouth, your body to do what he needs to do. See what he did for Rachel and how her whole household because she dared to trust. The man said, you made us swear. Yeah? She knew what she wanted. Ask God. Let's read John chapter 10 quickly so that you know who you are. No, that same John chapter 10 says the enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I have come that you might have life. But we we forget what Jesus says. But that's not where I'm going today. I'm going to verse 31. I want you to know who you are. 
So verse 31 of John chapter 10. He says, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. You see, because Jesus was declaring who he is, they were trying to make him say differently. He said, No. He says, I and my. If I read, just read verse 29 first. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So verse 33, verse 30, this is what blew their mind. He said, I and my father are one. Oh, 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 oh. Verse 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus says, wait, wait, wait. Many good works I have shown you from my father. He did not stop calling God father, even when they were about to stone him. He says, for which of those works do you stone me? And they answered, for a good work, we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself God. You see, human beings don't know who they are. God had told the children of Israel all along, you are my children, I'm your father. And then they were still afraid of saying, God is father. Jesus came and said, God is father. And they said, whoops, you shouldn't be saying that. I'm just a mere man. I can't be dealing with kings. So Jesus replies them. He said, is it not written in your law? Go to Psalm 82 verse 6. Is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. You've been reading Psalm 82 verse 6 all along. What were you reading? God said, you are gods. So if I say, I am, I am the child of God. How, how am I, you know, different or saying something different from what God himself had said? Verse 35 of John chapter 10. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him, whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God. You see, we we don't know identity, and when somebody tells us who we are, we still refuse to accept who we are. Even though it is written, you are God's. Jesus says, If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, at least believe the works. Here is the word. Read it for yourself. Believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. God chose it, not you. God chose to make you his child before you were born into the earth realm. You did not choose it. That's, that's, that's why Christianity is so easy. You believe that, you are in. <laughs> it's so easy, people miss it. That you may know and believe, that's all, that the Father is in me and I in him. We are not different. I am my Father's child. His blood flows through my veins. I have his DNA. We need to wake up. Don't wait for Pentecost to come and then we just do a celebration and then it's over. This is time to pray for revival. Lord, let it happen again in my time. 
Ask and you shall receive. It's not for the few. It's you and I. It's not for them. You and I are called into it. Let us conclude. Go with me please to Isaiah chapter 19. So that you see the love of God and the power of God. That God really does not think like we human beings. So stop thinking. Just follow him. Because it can only end well. It can only end well with God. With this God I'm talking about. I don't know which God you serve. I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Jewish people. The God of Israel. Jesus came as a Jewish man. And he says, salvation comes from the Jews. That might offend somebody, but do I care? No, I really don't. Because it's the truth. Chew it. When you swallow it, it will be sweet. Might be bitter at first. When you chew it and swallow, it will be sweet. Isaiah chapter 19. I would like to read from verse 16 to the end. And here I want you to see the heart of God, that he is really not man. Because he starts something and he makes sure it's perfect at the end. So, in that day, Egypt will be like women. So still talking about his terror here. In that day, Egypt will be like women and will be afraid and fear because of the waving of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he waves over it. So the terror of God, the fear of God. And the land that Egypt here at first is portrayed as the enemy. But the enemy, like Rahab, always has a chance. Jericho was the enemy, but Rahab chose to come out. And join the winning side. All right. Verse 17. And the land of Judah will be a terror to Egypt. The land of Judah, you, you are the land of Judah because you believe in Christ. You belong to Christ, the Jewish man. The land of Judah will be a terror to Egypt. So you are a terror to your enemy. Everyone who makes mention of it will be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. In that day, five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear by the Lord of hosts, one will be called the city of of destruction. Let's carry on. Verse 19. And in that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at his border. These were people who were opposing God at first. But when they see what God is doing through you, they will now start to worship your God. So Egypt that was enslaving the Jewish people, now are building pillars of worship unto the Lord Most High. Verse 20. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a mighty one, he will deliver them. You see, Egypt was the oppressor first, but now they have been oppressed and they will realize, ah, that God that delivered the Jewish people out of our hands, he is truly God. Let's go to him. So God will now send them a savior and a mighty one, and he will deliver them. You see, God does not think like you. 
Even though we say, when we talk about enemy, Satan is your enemy, not your fellow human being. Give your fellow human being a chance. Egypt was just doing what Satan used them to do because of ignorance. But the day they wake up, they start crying out to this God, God will send them a savior and a redeemer, a mighty one, to deliver them. Verse 21, then the Lord will be known to Egypt and the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day. You see, now it's both ways. Egypt will know God and God will know them. And they will make sacrifice and offerings. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. That means they know, they know, they know. I don't just speak, I do it. They will make a vow and they will perform that vow. You speak and you do it. You are not just a hearer of the word, you are a doer of the word. Verse 22, and the Lord will strike Egypt. He will strike and heal it. You see, they will return to the Lord and he will be entreated by them and he will heal them. Pray for your lost friends, those who don't know the God that you know. Pray for them. God does not want them to perish. God will heal them. God, when they cry out to him, God will answer them and heal them and save them. Verse 23. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian will come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria. And the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. So now, like Rahab, it's not just father and mother and brother and sister. It's the extended family. So now from Egypt, we are bringing in Assyria as well. See, this is what we human beings would not normally think of, but it's already written down. The Bible wasn't written today. God wants Egypt to be saved. God wants the Assyrians to be saved. God wants the whole world to be saved. Jesus died for everyone. So don't judge according to your flesh. Oh, they have killed, they have murdered, they have bombed, they have, they have committed atrocities. How can? No, God still wants them to be saved because God died for them too. So pray for them. Verse 24. In that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria a blessing in the midst of the land. You see, then Israel and Egypt and Assyria will all rejoice together. That's God's plan. That's God's will. This is Old Testament I'm reading. So God had already planned this long ago. The two becoming one. One new man in Christ. Jews and Gentiles as one in Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless. So let me just read from 24 again so that it makes sense. In that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. You see? You are God's inheritance. You inherit your father's estate. But others are also free to come in. Egypt, my people, come and enjoy with me. Assyria, the work of my hands. The people have turned to myself. Come, be one with me. And Israel, oh, I inherited you. I fathered you. I chose you. You are my inheritance. 
I am yours and you are mine. See, all three now come together because God wants it like that. This is why, why I'm telling you this is so that when I say fight the enemy, oppose the enemy, I'm not talking about human beings. The people that Satan are using are only victims of lack of knowledge. Fight, fight principalities and powers. Don't fight your fellow human being. God wants human beings to be saved. Whether they are Egyptians or Assyrians or whoever. Start to think like God. If you are truly God's. Like we just read now. Psalm 82 verse 6. Or John chapter 10. Verse 31 through that we read. Pray for the lost. Pray for your enemies. Jesus says so. Don't say, oh, see how terrible they are. No, God calls them his people. So who are you? So let us have the heart of Jesus. A heart of love. Don't judge by what you see. Judge by what you know, the word of God. Let the word of God be made manifest in us and let us truly be the living Jesus. Amen? Amen. I will leave it there. So now we want to pray for Israel. We want to pray for all Gentiles. Pray for souls. Pray for the courage to be the living Jesus. Pray for revival in this broken world. Because when darkness rises, the light of God also rises. You be the light of God that is going to overpower darkness. Because darkness can never survive where there is light. You walk into a dark house or a dark room, you switch on the light. Darkness doesn't say, oh, please give me a second. No, it gets cast, cast out instantly. So know who you are. And walk in that power. In Jesus name. Amen. I know I've said a lot. But they still say a word is enough for the wise. So if you have heard even one word today. Be wise. Let that word make you wise. Receive the wisdom of God. Not the, the, the intelligence that you learn in school. That, that's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. So let us pray. Let us thank God that he is the God of the whole earth. He will save Egypt. He will save the Assyrians. And he has already chosen the Jewish people. Jews and Gentiles coming together into God's presence. Let us pray for light, for truth, for revival, for the power of God to be made manifest through us. Let us pray, Lord, help me to diminish so that you may increase. It's not about me. It's all about you, Jesus. Prayers in Jesus' name. Marco Sarata. Eskalama Santum. Aziba Ariga Roda Azakata. Father, give us wisdom to understand. Open our understanding, Lord. Give us the, the love in your heart so that we can love fellow human beings. So that we don't treat them as we think, but we treat them according to what you say. All shall be saved. It's not your will that any should perish. You will go to any length to make sure that human beings don't go to hell. And we have to pray for them. We have to love them in regardless of what we think of them. It's not about what we think because we were there once. We are here by your grace. So Lord, we ask that souls will be saved. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now. We pray that Israel will know their Messiah. That they will acknowledge Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah. And they will come to understand 
what Isaiah 53 or Isaiah chapter 9 is talking about. A child was born. God came into our midst called Emmanuel, God with us. God did it that way. We cannot wait for the return of Jesus when we are not ready for him. This time, he's coming not to die, not, not meek on the donkey, but mighty on the horse. And we need to sanctify ourselves. That's why Jacob told his children, bring all the foreign gods, purify yourself. We want to move out of here. Let us forsake the past and step into the new with Christ Jesus. Why would the children of Jacob still be playing with foreign gods when they should have been the one to lead the way? A lot of Christians are still playing with, with foreign gods. A lot of people who call themselves Christians still don't know that they should get rid of those uh, uh, talisman and, 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 and card reading and tea reading and horoscope reading. These are foreign gods. You will not have power to withstand the enemy because you are playing into the devil's hands. Do not read horoscope. It's from the devil. Please. Don't consult mediums. It's from the devil. The Holy Spirit is here and he wants to talk to you. If you need revelation, ask the God of light. Step into his presence. He is light. In his light, we see light. There is no darkness. You will know what you need to know in the presence of Jesus. Horoscope cannot tell you that. Father, we pray. We pray for, for those who are lost. Those who are backslidden. That you would shine your light on them. That their hearts will be changed. Father, turn them to you. And they shall be restored. We stand in the gap right now. And we lift them up to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on your children. Sanctify us and purify us, blood of Jesus. Help us to live a righteous life. Because that's the only way to have power against the enemy. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of these words today. Help us to live in them to walk in them, to chew them, to meditate on them. Give us the wisdom to understand them because we are a God of love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, saints. I'm not looking at the time. Let's go into the communion. When you are feasting in the presence of God, you don't want to look at the time. He's giving you the proper yummy. Just enjoy it. Get your elements, please. Let's get into union with Christ. Let's come into union with Christ. That's communion. Come into union. It's a great thing. It's a great place to be. <laughs> My Father in me and I in him. You come into union like father, like son. We have been adopted into this household, not because of what you did. Father, we thank you. Most holy God, we worship you. Thank you that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you for giving us these gifts to bring to you, to present this bread to you, 
and by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's no longer bread, but it becomes the bread of life. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, my, my flesh is real food. My blood is real drink. And unless you eat of me and drink of me, you have no life in you. Lord, as you saved Rahab and her household from death, Lord, today we come out of death and we enter into life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At the end of the supper, he took the cup, gave you thanks and praise. He blessed you. And then he gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood. Whether they understood it or not, they just took him at his word. You better start to take God at, at his word. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Other than this, nothing else is accepted. And through this, Forgiveness of sin and repentance shall be preached to all men. That when they are washed in my blood, it's just as if they never sinned. What a privilege. That in one moment, under the shower of the blood of Jesus, all my sins are wiped out. Never to be remembered by God anymore. Thank you, Father. This knowledge is beyond us. Help us to receive it by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you because it is your power of sanctification and purification that this is now the very body and the very blood of Jesus. We consecrate this and we receive it for your glory and for our benefit. In Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ. most precious blood of our Lord, our King, our Savior, our Deliverer, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Let us pray. Wonderful and everlasting Father. Father, not unto us, but unto your holy name give glory. We acknowledge that it's not about us, but it's all about Jesus. All about your love for mankind. All about your choice to inherit us. You call Israel your inheritance. We are your inheritance and you are our inheritance. Human wisdom cannot understand this. That God Almighty would choose to have a personal dealing, personal relationship with human beings. You have to be a king to talk to a king. 
you made us gods. And you are the Most High God. We honor you. Help us to know our identity in you. Help us to know who we are because of you. Not because of anything we we have done or we can do. Thank you for calling us your own and giving us the opportunity to call you Father. We bless your name. We lift you up. We honor you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your flesh. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for causing these elements to become divine so that now we can partake in the divine nature. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to mingle with you. You in us and us in you and we in you. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well done, saints. Another two hours flown by. It's like two minutes, right? (laughs) All right. Won't keep you much. Remember, you don't eat once a week and survive. So if you feed yourself physically on a daily basis, then try and feed your spirit on a daily basis. Okay? And on our side, we have provided some means for that. We have the Youth Bible Study on Tuesday, Tuesday UK time, 6 p.m. for 30 minutes. Send your children to join. This is how you learn. They don't have to understand everything, but let them just be in the presence of God. Those 30 minutes in the presence of God will do what you cannot do in 30 years. Let them know God from day one. Let them understand the importance of being in the secret place. That's the only place they are safe and that's the only place they can be and you don't get gray hair overnight. Because anytime you turn around, you know where they are. You don't have to bother about, oh, where, 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 where is my son? Where is my daughter? You know exactly where they are. When you have taught them to be in the secret place all the days of their lives, you don't have to bother. So on the same Tuesday, by 7 p.m., and then on Wednesday, 7 p.m., and then on Friday, 7 p.m., we have the family Bible study, one hour each. So the, the Tuesday youth service is 30 minutes, and the adult one is one hour. You need the secret place as much as they do to so build, build your fire. It's the only way you can resist the enemy. It's the only way you can be a terror to your enemy. You, you, you become fire. And when they see a different kind of fire, you don't have to tell them to run, they will run themselves. All right. And then on Thursday night, 9 p.m., we have the altar of prayer, the MLJ prayer altar. Just come and bring your petition to God. Everybody, listen to Rahab. She prayed. For our family members, they were oblivious. Pray for your family members. Pray for your loved ones. It's one hour. If you think of the movies you sit down and watch, series after series, how many hours of your life is spent for, for, for no tangible reason, no, no useful reason? 
nothing, nothing. Those movies don't bring you anything useful. Spend time in his presence. Friday night, 10 p.m. for now. We do two services on Friday. I don't know that might change. For now, we have 10 p.m. fire hour of prayer. That, that time you just come and sit next to the fire and you get heated up. And before you, you, you know, what looked like bronze is shining gold. That's the purpose of that hour, the fire hour of prayer. Friday night, 10 p.m. UK time. All right. Give to the Lord. Don't let the enemy tell you you are giving to a church or a pastor. You are giving to yourself. Give and it shall be given to you. The lie of the enemy has been too loud for too long. When you sow, you reap. A farmer that sows expects a harvest. So when you sow, you sow into your life. You sow expecting a harvest. Don't let people lie to you. That's the lie of the enemy. Read the Bible, what the children of Israel used to offer sacrifice. Don't you thank God that we are not in their time? Our time is easy. Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Go and live in the Old Testament and see what they used to offer. Jesus himself said, give and it shall be given. And don't give grudgingly. Nobody's begging you. (laughs) Really, nobody's begging you. If you know what is good for yourself, do it. Full stop. But remember, you are investing into your eternal life. This is the ministry of the living Jesus. It is your eternal life with Christ that you are investing in. So it's up to you. Read your Bible. All right. I'll let you go. I bless you. Continue to pray for your family members and your loved ones. Do what Rahab did. Bring them all in. Brother, sister, mother, father, and their extended families. Pray for them. Pray for Israel. Pray for Egypt. Pray for Syria. Pray for Iran. Pray for India. Pray for the people who don't know this God. So that as we just read in Isaiah 19, at the end, God will say, Ah, my people finally knew me. Why? Because of your prayer. Your prayer is important. Rahab, a prostitute, prayed and saved the whole household. People who who knew about and people who didn't even know about. He just told them, come, come to my house this, this day. It's the only place of safety. And they obeyed. They just did it. And those who refused... You don't, they didn't live to tell. So make up your mind. Love people. Love people. Don't look at what they are doing. God sees their heart. You just pray for them. Okay? I'll love you and I'll leave you now. I love you. But Jesus loves you more. And I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. God is always covering you. Never forget that. The light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. No darkness can penetrate. And the love of the Father is a firewall of protection around you. Let the enemy try to cross that line. They will... They will, they will remember what happened to Pharaoh and, he, and his armies. So, I love you and I leave you. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may his perpetual light shine upon you. And may you be empowered to live for Jesus. Amen. 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 Mwah. Bye for now. Bye. God bless you.